Hey guys, my name is Shashank, and I'm a data analyst working out of Dallas, Texas. Today, we're going to be doing an extension to the SurveyMonkey data manipulation video I put out a couple of weeks ago. The idea today is to do the same transformation, except we're going to do it in R this time. I'm actually personally learning R right now, and I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to test out some of my skills and uh, just show you guys um, some of the skills that I need to develop on a regular basis as a data analyst. So actually, at the company I work at currently, a good chunk of the team knows R and a good chunk of the team knows Python. And there's maybe one or two people who can actually like work both languages um, at the same time. And I think that it would be a great value add for me to be one of those people. So I have been practicing my R skills. And I uh, just want to show you guys how I do the exact same data manipulation I do in my other video in R. For those of you that are just joining us, Go ahead and check out that video, at least the first 20 minutes of it, because there's a section where I'm manipulating an Excel document in order to get it into a certain format to where it's easier for us to work in code with it. And um, then come back over here and we can carry on in R. All right, so the basic idea of what we need to do is we first need to figure out how to open the file, import the data, um, the correct sheet, drop a couple of columns, unpivot our data, otherwise known as melting our data, um, read in a another sheet from the Excel file, um, drop NAs if we have them, join the first data frame to the second data frame we imported, aggregate the data, rename the columns, join the anti-aggregations to the original data set, and then export to an Excel document. So this will be a th this was a tremendous task to help me pick up some of uh, the skills that I'm quite good at in Python and try and do them in uh, in R. Um, and I would like to within a couple of months, maybe like three or so, uh, reach feature parity between my R and my Python skills. At least you know to some extent. I probably won't be um, able to reach exact parity between the two skills, but let's at least I'm trying to at least get a um, decent grasp of R. So let's get started. I'm going to put this over here on my other screen. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So I can't seem to get it to work. Okay. So I'm using R Studio. I actually tried to configure my Visual Studio code, which is the editor I use for Python to work like R Studio, but I was having the hardest time getting it to work. Um, especially with like knitting documents using Pandoc, it was really, really difficult to get to work. So I uh, am just gonna keep using R Studio like everyone else does. If you wanna follow along, look in the description below and you'll see a GitHub link with all of the files you need in order to follow along the tutorial. All right, so I'm using a R markdown file. And basically uh, what that allows me to do is that it allows me to intersperse commentary with code cells that I can run one by one. And I really like the idea of using code cells. As you probably know, I use Jupyter Notebooks. And I like that because it lets me um, iterate through the each of the, the, the steps that I want to perform instead of running an entire script all at once. And I feel like it makes it easier for me to write out my code. So even when I'm writing a normal Python script, um, I will sometimes write it in Jupyter first uh, in the Jupyter Notebook and then move it over to a Python script where I will actually productionalize it. So let's get started. On Mac, in order to make a new code cell, you hit Command Option I and you'll see basically that's how a new code cell is made. Just three of those back ticks and then in um, curly braces you have R. So first, like anything else, we are going to import our libraries. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll actually just copy and paste that from this document I have over here. And I'll explain why we want these libraries. You may have to install some of these libraries before you can actually import them. Uh, read XL. I'm using that one because the other Excel reading libraries that I found in R seem to need, uh, they have a Java um, dependency. And when I, 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 I was having the hardest time installing the right version of Java, it said it couldn't use version 15, it had to use version 8 through 11. So I highly recommend just using read Excel, very easy to use. Reshape2 is a library that allows us to melt our data frames, which means pivot it and unpivot the data frame. Um, melting is un, or melting is unpivoting, and then you know we can pivot it, which I think the term is casting. 
I was originally using a library called PLYR for something, but apparently this is an obsolete package, so I'm not using that anymore. Um, I figure I might as well let you guys know that this is a, apparently an obsolete package and shouldn't be used anymore. Data.table, that is used later to perform our aggregation. So we'll be performing our aggregations using data.table. And then write XL is going to be used to write our Excel file. Um, and I really should preface this by saying I'm by no means an expert at R. I'm not an expert at Python either, but I know my way around Python and I'm fairly confident in my skills. With R, uh, I really am just learning. And so if anyone has any commentary as to why certain things work the way they do or if there's a better way to handle something, please let me know. I'm always looking to learn. And if you could leave that in the comment section, it would be tremendously helpful. This is a safe community for everyone to comment and uh, give better solutions to problems that we might encounter. Uh, one question I did have, though, for anyone, if they knew what the answer was, is why in, in Python, for example, basically all data frame operations are handled by the pandas library, which makes it super easy. You just import pandas and that's all you need. But it seems to do, for example, like to read in Excel, I need one library. To reshape it, I need another library. To aggregate it, I need, an I need another library. To write it, I need another library. Um, am I just doing this very inefficiently or is this just kind of how R works? Uh, if someone could let me know, that'd be awesome. All right, so let us import these libraries. Awesome, that's no big deal. And then command option I to create a new cell. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a file path. That way I can easily pull files as I need to. So I'm gonna use the same PWD trick I use in Python, meaning present working directory gets assigned to. So this is one thing that was different from uh, Python where you just use the equal sign. Oh, and let me zoom in too. That way you guys can see it more easily. There we go. I really should have a checklist at the beginning of my videos of things I need to do. All right, so PWD. And I want that to equal get working directory. All right, and then uh, command shift enter. I'm assuming on Windows it's a control shift enter. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space over there. Command option I. Um, so I've assigned uh, present working, I've assigned the current working directory to this string over here, present working directory. Uh, and the reason I do that is the same reason I do it in Python. Sometimes when I move files around, I find they don't run as well if they. Um, don't have something that basically tells them exactly what directory they're starting off at. So this is just something I found to be quite helpful in Python, and I assume it's helpful in R2. Um, again, if anyone has any commentary, please let me know. All right, so let us import our data. So we're going to call this data import, and we're going to say we're going to assign it to the variable data import, and it's read underscore Excel. And let's see what we have over here. I wonder if, ah, interesting, okay. So I hit uh, on my Mac, control space to get that, uh, to get the code completion. So what I want is I want um, to combine present working directory with the name of the file, which as you can see over here, the name of the file will be data survey monkey output edited. So in order to concatenate two strings, in Python, you just use a plus. In R, it looks like you use this, um, I don't know if you call it a method, but something called paste. So we'll call this file path, and we'll say that is equal to paste. Um, and I want to paste present working directory and a slash, oh, whoops, a string, which is slash data survey monkey output edited dot x l s x and then what happens is what this does over here is that it'll actually uh, combine everything separated by the commas with a space separator um, so i actually don't want them to be separated by a space so i can specify that by saying the separator should equal that And then let's say the path equals file path. And then I need to specify the sheet, I believe. And the sheet I want imported is edited data. All right, and then let's take a look at what we import. 
Command Shift Enter. Awesome. It looks like it imported exactly as expected. Cool. All right, so we've imported our data set. And for those of you that didn't get to watch the previous video where I explain exactly what we're doing, I'll just give a quick overview of the task. So basically, I received this raw data from a client. Um, obviously, it's been the, the important information has been redacted. And we transformed it into this edited data using Excel. Uh, a lot of people had commentary on how you could use Power Query to do this entire task, and that's 100% true. I personally don't know Power Query, um, but it, it's a skill I might pick up later. The idea is just to show you guys this is, you know, Python's one tool you could use to get this done. So as you can see over here, it's basically a bunch of questions and answers. It's a survey monkey data set as the, you know, uh, the title of the video should make clear. And the idea is that we want to transform it into a long data set and add some um, important information. That way the client can do some transform or the, the client can visualize the data in Tableau. So that's the idea of the task we're doing right now just to give you guys some context. All right, command shift I, or sorry, command option I. We imported our data. Now I'm gonna do something I do in Python all the time where I modified, I create a copy of whatever data frame I import. And the reason I do that is because Occasionally, I'll make a mistake and transform the data in an incorrect manner, and this allows me to roll back my changes very easily if I incorrectly, uh, if I make a mistake, and especially if I've imported a very large data set that takes a while to import. This can be a bit of a lifesaver as far as time is concerned. All right. Yep, looks like the same thing. Cool. I do notice that when you turn it into a data frame that these spaces get turned into period. So you see this is the original file. And then when I come down here, these periods are added in here. Um, I don't know how R actually handles data frames. That's something I do have to read up on. Um, but I noticed that is definitely something that's different from pandas and Python. Again, anyone that has any uh, enriching information or enlightening information as to why R handles certain things, especially if you have experience in Python too, uh, it'd be really helpful if you, if you could leave that in the comments. This channel is to help me um, spread my knowledge, but also it's for me to learn. I'm really hoping to learn from you guys as well because I'm a lifelong learner and I really wanna keep learning. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to drop some columns. So there's a couple of columns over here that I don't need. So I'm gonna list them out here and we're gonna drop them. So we're gonna make a an array of columns to drop. And the way you, I think they're called vectors, and the way you make one in R is you use this C over here, and then you just create what would be, what would we call a tuple in Python of your different uh, items. So I'm not gonna type that all out. I'll copy and paste that over here. So these are column names of columns I wanna drop. They basically don't have useful information. So I wanna drop them. All right, so columns to drop. All right, looks good. Let us create a new code cell. And now we will actually drop these columns. So I'm gonna be using, um, I'm gonna slice our data set in order to actually create a data set without the columns that uh, we just specified over here. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. So normally in, in uh, Python and pandas, I would use the dot drop method. Um, here, I'm just gonna create a brand new data frame. So we're gonna say data set underscore modified. Uh, we're gonna assign data set modified. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice it. So when you slice it, I can specify which rows I wanna keep, and that'll be the first argument and which columns I wanna keep is the second argument. So it's kind of like LOC or ILOC in Python. So I wanna keep all my rows, so that's why I just don't specify anything there. And then I want to have all of my columns that are not in that are not in um, the columns to drop 
string that, or the columns drop vector I specified up there. So the exclamation mark meaning not. Um, I'm not exactly sure what names is, so might actually be a good thing to search up. As you can see, I looked it up earlier. Set the names of an object. So I'm guessing in R, the column headers are called names. Yeah, I'm guessing, so R names. And this is what I do on a daily basis. Um, the, the idea of these videos is to give you guys an idea of like what daily life can be like for a data analyst. And you spend a lot of time in documentation. So um, I really hope I'm not boring you guys, but giving you guys a realistic idea of what being a data analyst is all about. Row names. Um, well, I would think they're column names. So, yeah, I guess names, I know call names is something you can use to get the names of all the columns. I guess names is just how they refer to the columns. So what we're saying over here is we want all of the rows from dataset modified and the columns that are not in, and let's see, I think I just type in columns to drop. All right. And let's see if we get the desired result. I think we do, because if we go up here, awesome, yeah. After respondent ID, I should get start date and end date but I wanted to drop those and all the preceding columns I and mean, all the uh, following columns. So it looks like it did exactly what we expected. Awesome. That was pretty easy. All right, next, um, next step. So now I need to melt the data frame. So basically what I wanna do, uh, let me open. I wanted to drop these columns over here and I want to take every other column after the eighth column and I want to unpivot it or melt it. So basically take it from here and then make a row for every single answer and every single question. So that's what I want to do. So for example, like this would be a row, 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 this would be one, this would be one, this would be one, this would be one. So that's the idea. That's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, well, I don't want to leave that open, so let me close that. And so let's go ahead and specify which columns that we actually want to melt. So we're going to say ID variable, so ID vars. And we're going to see that equals, so before that, let me show you guys. what this call names thing does. So by using call names, this is kind of like a data frame dot columns in Python. It basically gives you a list of all the columns. And so you see, I want to, there's like 94 columns. I want to drop a bunch of them. So I'm going to be using the index numbers to do that. So it should equal call names for data set underscore modified. And then I want to slice here. Um, so what happens is this will give me all the all of the column names and I want columns one through eight. And one major difference is R uses one based indexing versus zero based indexing in Python, where in Python that you would have to use zero. So in R you can use either zero or one in this case, but um, the first, item of an index in, in R is one, the first index, not the zeroth one. All right, so let's see which variables this gives us. Okay, cool. Yeah, these are the exact ones I wanted to drop. And just to check, let's see what the ninth one is. So question one response, uh, 
Well, a question one response. I, I want to actually melt that column, so I don't want to include that. So eight is exactly what we want to do. All right. Let us do. Let us melt the data set now. Data set underscore melted, and we're gonna assign that to. I think you just have to type in melt. Yeah, I think we just type in melt. Cool. And then I give the data frame I want to melt. So I want to melt the modified data set modified data frame. And I think I specify the ID variables next. Yes, so ID equals ID variable, or sorry, ID underscore variables. You know what? Looking from side to side up here is not very helpful. I can actually probably just move this over here and still not distract you guys with it. Cool, okay, that's actually a lot better. Benefits of having an ultra wide monitor. So ID, or not, not assigned to, equals ID variables. And variable.names, question dot plus sub question. So what I'm doing over here is I'm telling it to take in this data set, this data frame. Uh, the ID variables will be ID vars, which are the ones we specified over here. So these are the ones I want to stay. I don't want them to transform at all. And I want to call the variables question plus sub question. Um, and if you watch the first 20 minutes of my other video, then you'll see uh, why uh, I, I, I specified them as such. And this isn't a great practice. I shouldn't be using a plus over here, but this is what I did in the previous video, so I'm just sticking with the same convention, so it's easier for people to follow along. Value.name equals answer. And I should get about 17,000 rows. 17,028, awesome. Exactly what we were looking for. And you'll see what happened over here. I think I can... Shows, yep, there we go. So you'll see over here, the first couple of questions stayed as is, and then everything else got transformed into question plus sub question and answer. So that's exactly what we were looking for. And that we got 17,000 rows because there was about, uh, if I want to say six, it was 600 by 94, if I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken, but that, that that's about correct. Or sorry, 300 by 94, yeah. So we should get about 17,000 rows. All right, so we melted our data set. So now I need to... Hmm. Okay, there we go. So now I need to do a join, where I join the question name with the sub-questions. Um, that way we can tell, because it was part of the client's request basically, so that's what we want to do. So questions underscore import, and then we're going to say read Excel, basically the same thing we had last time, except it's going to be a different sheet name, file path, sheet equals question. And I modified it slightly for this task because um, data frames do some weird stuff to your data sometimes. And instead of, you know, actually figuring out exactly how to get the data like exactly as I wanted it to, I just modified it. It was a lot easier that way. All right. So I think there we go. We have our yep, our raw question, raw sub question, sub question, question plus question, sub question. Awesome. That's exactly what we wanted. And now let's make a copy of it like we did last time. So how do we do that again? We're gonna do, um, we're gonna call it questions, and then we're gonna say that is assigned to data.frame. And this is a major difference with Python, I think. Um, or may maybe this means a method in, you know what, that actually might be a method in R as well. I'm not exactly sure though. Don't take my word for it. I actually don't know how R works. The idea is just to be dangerous. And I find when you are learning a, 
new language especially um knowing how, why things work the way they do isn't always helpful initially sometimes you just want to get up and running as fast as possible and then for someone like me it really helps to do that and then i can figure stuff out intuitively as time goes on um but trying to like trying to do it the way we learn it in school where basically um you're taught the theory behind something before ever applying it uh never made much sense to me because i um i, I don't intuitively understand what's going on all right so now we want to join the first data set we have, data set modified up here, or data set melted, with the questions data set. So we want to join this data set over here with our questions data set. Um, it will be a SQL join, which we'll call, we will do using the merge method in R, uh, same as in Python. All right, so you have an X, and that is going to be data set melted. We have a Y, so an X data set and a Y data set, our left and our right. And our Y is going to be questions. Perfect. And then I think you do by.x. That's how you specify the which um, columns on the X side you want to join on. And we want to join on question plus sub-question. And then by.y, we want to join on question dot 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 sub question so that was a transformation that data dot frame did to our data set it changed the plus to a dot and then what this does over here is this by itself will do an inner join which i don't want i want a left join so in that case i have to type in all dot x equals true if i typed in all dot y equals true i believe that's a right hand join i kind of get the logic of that seems a bit random to me though but I also don't have much experience with R, so I'm sure if someone learned, if R was the first thing someone learned, then SQL and everything else would seem a bit weird. All right, cool. And it looks like our joins actually did work out. I was having troubles with these uh, joins earlier when I was getting the code ready for y'all. I remember someone mentioned that they wanted to see me cold code, and that was very helpful for them, so. Uh, in Python, I can truly cold code. Like, you know, you can just give me a task and I'll, like, do it in front of people. Um, but R, obviously, I'm learning it right now. So I, I did this entire task before, and I had the code written out on the side. Um, because I, I, I'm not confident enough to just cold code. I, I would just stumble through all of it. And it took me several hours to figure this out. Like, something I would have been able to do, to do this in Python in about 20 minutes. Um, or, I mean, less, really, um, if I knew exactly what the task was. But uh, in R, it took me several hours to figure this out, so. All right, data set merged. Now we want to do respondents. And this is going to be, what we're going to do over here is we're going to be combining a bunch of, we're going to be aggregating a bunch of data and then rejoining it to our data set. That was another ask the client has. Basically, they want to have the number of respondents that responded to every question. And so that's what we're doing right now. So we're going to do data set underscore merged. So the way this works is we have respondents. We're signing it to data set underscore merged. And it is not. I want the non-NA values. So the not null values because we have some null values in here from data set merged. And you use the dollar sign to specify a column. So I want the non-null values from the data set that merged data frame based on the answer column. All right, so what does this give us? Hmm. Ah, whoops. This is supposed to be brackets. My bad. Ah, okay, okay. So remember earlier uh, when you when you are slicing a data frame, the first argument before the first before that comma is the number is the rows you want, and that's what we're specifying over here. And I didn't have that comma later or earlier. 
So I wasn't specifying the columns that I wanted to keep. So it's important to have that. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So that reduces our data set a little bit. Cool. All right, now we're going to be counting the number of distinct respondent IDs per question in, in order to see how many people answered a certain question. Respondent ID is our unique is our unique key in um, or our primary key in this data set, as they say in SQL land. Let's add a new cell. And we're going to say DT, and I'm using DT because I literally copied that from a Stack Overflow post, data.table. So I'm not exactly sure what this data table is, thing is, but apparently this is, a, this is the easy way to aggregate data these days, or one of the easy ways. There's apparently two ways to do it, and data.table is one of them. So we're going to make a data.table out of respondents, and then we're going to say respondents is dt sliced dot number uh well let's see i can call this whatever i want distinct answers and that is the length of the unique respondent dot id and then i want to do that by question all right so i think i did that incorrectly no yeah three okay yeah looks about right Let's see what we get oh, okay cool yeah that's exactly what i was looking for every question along with the number of distinct answers we receive for it perfect so what I believe I'm doing over here is I'm creating a data.table and then I'm slicing it so I want all the rows, but I want to aggregate it. So I'm, I'm not too sure what this dot over here is, but I'm calling it distinct answers. I see that. And I'm saying that equals the length of the unique respondent IDs group by question. So this dot over here is not is what's really not making much sense to me. So I'm going to go look that up and see what that is later. But this is how you count the number of unique responses for a given a given column. And I believe if you wanted to have multiple columns, you would create a vector of them using that C method we did or we used earlier. All right, let's go to the next section. So now we want to merge the data over here with our old data set. So we're going to do data set underscore merged. Two. We're going to call it data set, data set underscore merge two, and we're going to merge x equals data set merged, so that I want that, y equals uh, respondents, uh, and then let's say I think the next one was by, was it by, yeah, by equals question, luckily that's the same in both of them, so I don't have to do by.x and by.y, I can just say by for both of them, and it'll give me what I'm looking for all dot x equals true data set underscore merged to let's see what we get over here all right i think that's a good join i'm not getting any duplicate rows as i see over here i always check for duplicate rows or missing rows that's how i caught a bad join at one point in time okay cool that's exactly what i'm looking for distinct answers to be joined to our data set all right, we're nearing the end. Just a couple more things we got to do. So data set merged to. Now, the number of people who had the same answer to a question, that's what we need to see. So we're going to create a variable same answer. Data set underscore merged. And we want the data set underscore merged where, like earlier, values are not NA. For the answer column in dataset.merged, or answer, yeah, 
So the rows where values are not NA for the data set for the answer column in data set dot merged or data set merged. And then we're going to use that same technique we used earlier. And if anyone has a great resource for people who know pandas and want to learn how to use, do the same stuff in R, please let me know. I checked out Panda's website and it wasn't particularly helpful, um, at least for me. And I can't seem to find a single source to just tell me, hey, this is all the stuff you need to do to do like data transformations in R. So same answer. So that's this is exactly what we did above there. Same underscore answer. DT underscore one. And I want all of my rows and we're going to do the same what did I call it? distinct answer oh this should actually be distinct respondents that's okay we're going to rename everything at the end anyways so we'll call this distinct a2 and we're going to say that equals like earlier length of the unique values of respondent ID and we want to do this by we want to do it by two different rows this time or two different columns this time so we're going to create a vector of question plus sub question and answer Right, I think that should get us what we're looking for. Awesome, that looks about correct. And if I remember correctly, this is exactly what the Python version had. All right, so now we're gonna do one last merge in order to add this data that we just obtained over here to our original data set. So we're gonna say merge x equals data set merge two, I believe. And then y equals data set, or well wait, same answer, by equals c, and then it'll be the same thing over here. So c, meaning that we're creating a vector. I, I believe this is basically how you create lists in R. That's my understanding. The syntax is not too difficult once you get the hang of it. Um, it's, it's just really interesting, like, doing the same stuff but in such a different way. It just, it feels really interesting. Awesome. Cool. So I think it'll probably be at the end. Distinct A2. There we go. Awesome. So now I think we have maybe just a few more operations. Yep, just one more operation. So now let's see what our column names look like. I would like to rename them. All right, so I have the code over here to rename all the columns we want to rename. It's quite a bit of code, so I don't want to type it all up. And then I just have to change the last distinct answers. I'll go over in a second, don't worry. All right, so basically what I'm doing over here is I'm saying the column names of the data set, change them, change the ones that equal this to equal this. It's not quite as simple as the way it works in pandas in my opinion, but this, this is just something I'd memorize. So this is how I'm gonna rename the columns. All right, yep. Division, division, other, position, generation, gender, tenure, employment type. Yep, that's about right. Awesome. And then I just want to export this to an Excel file. So using that ri library, using that library I brought in earlier, 
Uh, I think it's right underscore XLSX. I have to specify a data set first. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier where I pasted file path and whatever I want the file name to be, final underscore output underscore r dot xlsx and I want to, I want the separator sep to equal whoops to equal that uh, and that should be about it I'm not going to run that cell because I have this entire um, I, I'm, it's, it's in a directory that's being synced to my GitHub right now, which I'll clean up before I launch this video. That way it's easy for you guys to follow along. But be sure to just go look at that GitHub if you're interested in following along with this code. But there you go. This is the SurveyMonkey data transformation performed in R. I'm sure there were many inefficiencies in my code and many things that I didn't explain very well. And if anyone knows, uh, please let me know and please comment below how I could have done this better. This is really a learning experience for me. And part of the reason I'm showing you this YouTube, or part of the... Um, truth of what a day in the life of a data analyst is. You're learning new technologies all the time um, and or improving your skills and spending three to four hours to figure this stuff out and to learn all the different commands in R was definitely worth my time and something I think will pay dividends in the future. But if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. I also have a couple of links down below if you're interested. I'm probably going to link this monitor and stuff if people are interested in uh, purchasing and I've had a couple of comments asking what this monitor exactly was. Uh, it's an absolute unit and amazing to use. But uh, if you guys have any questions or if you have any ideas for new videos, please leave them below. Um, every subscription, every like really tells me that you guys really want to see what a data analyst actually does on a day-to-day -day basis instead of just a blog. And that's really what I hope to deliver to you guys. So thank you guys so much for your time and I hope you have a great day.